Now today I'm gonna tell you all about the suit box. Now the suit box itself I have indeed covered at an earlier stage, in fact it was earlier this year. Uh, it was in its earlier stage in production and uh, you know it was all wow and amazing but now it is much more improved. Now this hasn't just been sent to me, uh, this is the one which I've always had, in fact it is a box that just been sent to me. The boxes have come in production now and I requested one, I thought you know it looks really cool and I want one. <laughs> and uh, actually within the box uh, Wayne had sent me, Electronscape had sent me, um, <laughs> hello mighty, this is the prototype, the Neelix adapter. Be gentle with it, if need be, stroke it and say nice things to it. <laughs> Hope you like this box. Also notice, um, you will notice, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna fall for it, because I've seen that notice before. I had it written in my bedroom <laughs> when I was a teenager. Anyway, this is a Neelix adapter and uh, well, the prototype of the Neelix adapter, the only one to exist. <laughs> that was very kind of him to send me that, but this is the final product of the Neelix adapter. So yeah, I will be going through those in the next part. But for now, let's have a look at the sit box itself. Okay, so one thing you will have noticed since is uh, I've actually put a case on this thing and uh, the cases for the actual thing have uh, not yet arrived um, Wayne is sorting out the plastics I'm not sure by the time this video is up if you have sorted it out or not with the plastics company but uh, anyway this is one he sent me quite earlier on and I ended up spray painting it myself so it's kind of like an my own custom made uh, made thing and I did post it up in the Sitbox group which if you're not a member of I highly recommend you uh, joining the Sitbox group if you want updates on this uh, it's regularly updated anyway <clears throat> let's have a little play of this shall we now if you wish to watch last time's video uh, the link is in the description below just to kind of uh, show you the progress what it was back then and what it is now you know quite a lot has changed now one of the things I specifically requested, uh, you will notice in last time the headphone socket was actually uh, at the bottom. So basically he flipped the screen over using a little command. Uh, so that's simply because I noticed that this was annoying me. As when I see the tracker program, I'd like to, I like to watch it sometimes and put it on my desk. So, you know, there's just no way with something like this, you cannot put it in without damaging the, um, the cable itself. So. I requested this way. Okay, so let's uh, play a mud on this thing. Just one of the right now. This time, you can what you can do in the settings. Oh, look at that parallax scrolling. It's kind of nice. You can change the mud stereo, the stereo separation. Uh, you can change that real time now, unlike last time where you have to, where you had to start and stop the song. Now uh, you have the options for sit stereo, rhyme stereo, just like last time. Uh, same with last time, it's just the equalizations. You can adjust them how you like them. Close that. Then you have program timers. Unlike last time, you can choose um, how how many times the song loops and plays or how long the song plays for including the loops so you know there's some extra functions that have been added you see the big demo here again looking fantastic this will um, resonate with the Atari ST users Now one thing I must show you is the uh, screen calibration, um, which wasn't there last time. So you do switch it off, put your finger on the screen, <clears throat> and then switch it on. And you can see here, it calibrates, you can calibrate the screen by just pressing these dots. It asks you which ones. And that's it, it's calibrated, reset and reboot to complete, so you just press the reset button at the back here. Now one cool thing is the easter egg which Wayne put, had put in for me is still there, so you turn it off 
and uh, yeah, secret button, something which I'm not going to, <laughs> you know, reveal. It's for you to mess around and find if you wish to. And I think it's so cool. And those of you who know me you will know that I really love this tune. And this is direct sit, by the way. It's not the recording, it's the actual sit file being played. Now later on, possibly in the next um, uh, video, the next part of this, I'm going to do a comparison of this versus the actual real 8580 in my Commodore 64. Because we're going to take this over in the next um, video, in the next part, we're going to take this over to the retro corner and uh, yeah, to talk about the features that are uh, that you can do with uh, the Neelix adapter. Now, just the same as last time, you can uh, create playlists here. Play a playlist. Uh, actually, if you go to the playlists here, you can actually just add a file or even add a directory. So let's say I can um, add a sit here. Okay, so that's added here. And then I want to add a mud. So I go to parent and you go into my muds. Just like random selections behind the mirror, I love that. So basically adding, you can add um, a playlist, you can make a playlist of different formats, different file names, let's just do one more. Let's do another sit tune. So we have a, a playlist of four tunes here. Now all you need to do is just like save as, you can just like make a, you know, In the Mighty Mix, press OK, and I should be saved as a playlist here. Yeah, so play a playlist, go into there, press OK, and then you can see this Mighty Mix that I've just created here. The rest of them are old actually from the old system, I need to um, redo them. It's basically a retro music format lover's dream device. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things I can mess around with the entire day and just, you know, make playlists and uh, put my entire mod and sit collections on this. And, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Playlist mod. Okay, so you can change the mod of the playlist here. At the bottom, you can have it repeating, you can have it random and so forth. And if we're next track, and it's playing a mod now, which means you can just put it onto the... Um... Oh, hold on. I just noticed something. Nobody notice. Who's in the top left corner? <laughs> Super Frog and his little friend. I find that's so cool. It's like different things. If you were to go into the um, player itself, actually, I just need to get this to uh, bring this, bring that up. Go into the tracker. just like view it how you want because I've always loved always I've loved uh, viewing um, the actual tracker data I listen that's how I listen to it on my actual Amiga itself and then you can see a uh, defender <laughs> I find that really cool it's a really nice touch it's got a very demo scene kind of feel to this I think it's just, um, I think it's just a beautiful device, to be honest. And uh, there is a story behind this port here, and only my SID box, my personal SID box, has this. See, this is a good thing about the SID box, you can customize it. And uh, you can customize it how you want, and this is exactly what it's built for. Um, now this, the story behind this is uh, the actual programming. Now back when I showed you this the first time, um, what, what I had to do to update the firmware is actually, uh, in fact I'll show you, I had to actually put the hex file under the computer, connect this via USB on the computer, and then connect this, um, well the first time I had to connect it, on the circuit board itself, each individual wire, uh, each individual one of these, 
and it was a real pain. Uh, it literally, I had to hold five pins, uh, five of these wires into the circuit board and just hold them down for like about a minute while it flashed. And uh, of course, you know, any little movement would render it, you know, a failed flush. Thankfully, you cannot brick this thing, or else I would have bricked it like 15 times over by now, possibly more. So I got frustrated at this because, you know, every other second, <laughs> every other minute, I should say, um, Wayne would be just like, oh, I got a new hex file just when I'd finished flashing, flashing the first one. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's the whole nature of being a tester and so forth, you know, because um, there's always new things and he is improving it, you know, real time and I'm testing it real time as he's improving it. So we're kind of like working together on this. And, um, you know, I got frustrated. So what I did was internally, uh, as you can see from the footage here, I actually had um, put a port on the outside that I could just simply connect this to like this. So life just became so much more easier. You know, updating it this way. But you know what the cool thing about this is now? How you can update it is, you know, not through this. Uh, you don't need to use the programmer anymore. Um, because Wayne has now <clears throat> put a boot plugin. He's programmed the boot plugin. I just needed to flush that once. I think yours will come with it already flushed. And all you need to do is um, rename the hex file as sidbox.hex and then put it onto the card itself uh, and you know just copy it onto the root directory of the SD card and then just insert that. Okay so what you need to do is just keep hold of the top and the bottom buttons and then turn it on and then you will see a nice familiar screen that looks like Workbench 1.3, which I really love. Again, I just, I asked him, I requested, can you make it please look like Workbench 1.3? <laughs> because that's my favorite Workbench theme. And it will start, um, what do you call it, flashing the hex, the updating the firmware. And you can do that with, uh, and of course, mine is upside down. Well, right way around. <laughs> and there you go, that's the new firmware flashed. And that's how easy it is now. You don't have to mess around with the programmer or anything like this. So the sit box here doesn't actually just appeal to the uh, music lovers, the retro music uh, format lovers. It actually appeals to um, the programmers as well, the programmers amongst you, uh, because you can actually write your own uh, 6502 uh, programs with the 6502 emulator on this. So you can just like, um, one second, if we actually go to, yeah, I just have my pair of shoes here. And this is a program that has been written by Electronscape himself, just an example. A little demo program with a ghost and a bubble. <laughs> so basically you just write anything and just... Uh, you can write your own demos, your own music, your routines and things like this and then just play it on this. And uh, you can even write your own games if you'd like. Because, you know, it does have hardware buttons here, it does have a touch screen, so, you know, you got... It's um, a good uh, creator's tool as well. You know, which is kind of cool about this. Uh, if I could program, <laughs> if only I could program, I would. Now also another thing to mention is that the source code of this is uh, available, this program here. So those pro those coders of you can, you know, examine that. Uh, I've linked it in the description below. So you can, you know, get a bit of an idea on how it's written. <laughs> So that is all for today, do check out next week's for part 2 and uh, thanks so much for your likes, your shares, do leave your thoughts in the comments below, don't forget to check out my other videos and do subscribe for more. And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you know when I have uploaded. And also thanks so much to my patrons for all your support and your donations. If you wish to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon's websites or YouTube channels. For now, I will say adios.